Hello and welcome to this series of lectures on urban economics and management with a spe special focus on developing countries. My name is Professor Lusubga Kironde, Professor of Land and Urban Economics. Welcome. Um, so far we have covered a number of areas. In lecture one, we looked at the meaning, scope and application of urban economics. In lecture two, we looked at economics of urbanization and the rationale for urbanization and continued urban growth. In lecture three, we looked at urban land use patterns. In lecture four, we looked at urban employment and livelihood earning activities. In lecture five, we looked at urban housing and human settlements. In lecture six, we looked at urban housing and looked at owning versus uh, renting. In lecture seven, we looked at urban housing with a special focus on elements of housing uh, finance. Now, this is lecture eight, and uh, we are looking at the informal urban er housing areas uh, in, developing, in the cities of the developing world. At the end of this lecture, we believe that you will get the meaning of informal settlements, slums, shanty towns, and squatter and unplanned areas. You will appreciate the compulsion to live in such areas. You will know the economic and social costs of living in informal areas. You will get to know some approaches that have been undertaken to address such areas. And you will contemplate uh, some future policy directions. Now, what is the problem? The problem is that a very high proportion of urban dwellers in Africa live in informal settlements. In sub-Saharan Africa, the proportion is 62%. But we look at when we look at individual cities, in Kampala, Uganda, it is 70%. In Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, 70%. Nairobi, Kenya, 60%. In Rwanda, it's 42.1%. In, in South Africa, it's 23%. And in Lusaka, Zambia, it's 70%. Uh, and here you can see some examples of uh, the way informal settlements look in Ibuaise, Kampala, in Tandale, Dar es Salaam in uh, South Africa and in Kigali, uh, Rwanda. We need to know some common terms that are used to describe uh, these areas. Uh, a slum is a heavily populated area with substandard housing and squalor lacking infrastructure amenities. A shanty town implies makeshift and chaotically built housing area. Squatter area means that the land on which the settlement has developed was illegally, is illegally occupied. Informal settlements is, is an area de uh, uh, developed without adhering to any regression, and unplanned area would be an area developed without a formal land use plan. Now, in the literature, the word slum is prevalently used. A true slum has makeshift or dilapidated buildings, a high, proportion, high, high population densities, squalid neighborhood conditions, poor or lacking public infrastructure and amenities, lack of formal ownership and development documents, and is occupied by low-income households. There are cases where issues of antisocial behavior are also associated with the slums. Since the settlements vary very much, we prefer to use the term informal areas. Uh, characteristics of informal areas are buildings are irregularly put up, lacking cognizable land use plan, the quality of buildings is low, sometimes makeshift. They lack or have scant and non-standardized public infrastructure such as roads, drains, and public place spaces. Many buildings are inaccessible by motorized vehicles. Water, sanitation, electricity, and waste management services are either poor or non-existent. And some areas are on marginal or hazardous land. Uh, they have a tenacious land tenure uh, status and you have high occupation, occupancy rates and uh, overcrowding. The significance of informal areas is that for house builders, acquisition of land may be easier and it can be developed without onerous conditions. For house seekers, housing in an informal area may be cheap compared to housing in formal areas. Sometimes the location is convenient near places of work and economic activities. Informal areas themselves are a beehive of economic activities and social activities affording residents means of earning uh, a living. However, there are many disadvantages of living in these areas. They suffer from negative externalities such that buildings are not in, to, to any order. One's, one's toilet may face another, another's sitting room. 
They do not benefit from zoning provisions. They lack goods and services with the public good characteristics such as roads and drains. In former areas are less tall than former areas, but have a higher proportion of land area covered by buildings, so there is less space is used for roads and other amenities. They lack form ownership documents and have high welfare costs to residents and society uh, in general. We can attempt to have a typology of informal areas. We can, we can uh, categorize them in form of income. Most are occupied by low-income households, although some, especially in Africa, some accommodate middle and high-income households. We can look at their legality. In some cases, occupiers are illegal squatters. In others, the occupiers have legitimacy. We can classify them by density. The older ones and those in, in city areas are used at high density, uh, but elsewhere, they are used, especially at the periphery, they are used at low densities. We can look at their location, whether that is inner city, mid city, peripheral, near or away from infrastructure, or on hazardous land. We can classify them by age, uh, some are old, some are middle age, some are new. The older, the higher the densities. And we can classify them by status, uh, whether they are stagnant, declining, consolidating, uh, or upgrading. Why do informal areas keep on growing? Uh, they, they grow because of the failure of the market to provide for order land development due to the inherent imperfections in the land market. But also they grow due to the failure of public authorities to play their part in the grating for orderly urban development. This is made worse by the following factors. Uh, rapid urbanization, lack of resources, especially financial, human and capital, inappropriate standards and procedures, and uh, governance uh, deficits. How do we deal with slums in sub-Saharan Africa? While informal areas offer accommodation, they have social, economic, and political problems. They are largely accepted now, but dealing with them is not easy. During the early days of independence, demolition and resettlement policies were tried. These were found to be unsustainable and they have largely been abandoned. Rebuilding slum housing into permanent houses was tried in Dar es Salaam, for example, in the 1960s. This uh, had no addition to the housing stock, so it was abandoned. Then there has been upgrading, uh, which means institution of some basic infrastructure accompanied by some form of formal recognition. For example, the sites and services and squat upgrading programs of the 1970s and 80s, which in instances included house registration. Upgrading has also included working with the communities, such as the Community Infrastructure Upgrading Program of Dar es Salaam in the 2000s. Regularization has focused on granting some form of recognition, such as a residential uh, license. What are the options that uh, we have of dealing with informal areas? Well, you can think of demolishing them, resettle, and building anew. This is the least preferred option. It is expensive, it destroys existing capital and social networks. Accept informal areas as part of the growing city and develop policies, programs and actions to improve the life of those urban dwellers in informal areas, including looking at the appropriate standards. To upgrade them, meaning minimum demolition and resettlement, the, the upgrading package can include instituting some infrastructure, regularizing tenure, improving housing quality, enhancing security of land tenure, and implementing the, all these uh, together with the, the communities. Other options include land sharing, where the public or private land occupied by squatters is developed to provide affordable housing for the occupiers and high value developments to recoup uh, the costs. Land pooling and adjustment is used mainly at urban fringes, where land is pooled, planned, and given back to the owners less a percentage that goes to public infrastructure and amenities, and that is sold to recoup the costs. Alternative, this is an alternative to compulsory acquisition and the compensation. In all cases, uh, the community involvement uh, is crucial. How can we stem the growth of informal areas? We have seen that they are growing fast. One is to plan land ahead of settlements. This could be done in collaboration with existing landowners, the communities, and also the private sector. Two is to revise planning standards and procedures so that we can accommodate the needs and the capabilities of uh, low-income households, for example, reducing uh, uh, plot size in planned areas. To improve land governance by decentralizing powers, law authorities, and involving communities and the private 
sector. So, what is the take home? Uh, informal urban housing areas are an important part of the urban socioeconomic fabric, so they should not be wished away. We need a long term community based program to upgrade them. We should realize that they are not homogeneous, thus, the need of thorough understanding of the various interests, inter interests that are uh, included in these informal areas. And we need to be proactive, uh, stemming the growth of new informal areas by, among things, looking into procedures of land planning and the standards adhered to. It is my hope that you have liked this video, and if you like this series, please uh, subscribe to my channel. Do strike the like button and send us comments. We very much appreciate getting your feedback. Thank you very much for your interest in informal urban housing areas. See you next time.